Hello good people from the YouTube, here's Marcel Durham once again and today I'm going to try to do a very objective review of this Fender uh, Champions 40 which has been told on YouTube to be a hidden gem, a hidden secret, an amazing amp, blah 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 and actually it sucks, yeah it's crap for a beginner, makes total sense and I'll make a point out of that but it's still a very cheap bad sounding amp that if you dial in a, a lot you can make it work but it's still not really pleasant especially if you increase the volume it's a very loud amp it's actually very loud for what it is it's a 12 inch speaker so it gives you all that thump and low end that you might want from a serious amp but uh, the transistor amp which I, I don't have anything against transistor amp I like, I like my pathfinder here that you can see uh, it's just that this one is really bad uh, my opinion of course but like I said we can dial in something useful so let's go let's dive into it um, so let's show really quick the panel and I'm gonna have my trusty cell phone here to do a very close proximity uh, camera so we're here and we got uh, your input and foot switch I don't have the foot switch but if you buy the 100 version it comes with the foot switch I got this used anyway so I don't have first channel you only have volume second channel which is between these two lines you got gain and volume and amp modeling which is digital versions of different amps and it goes from three on each then you got your EQ and effects section which is shared by both channels when you switch channels you can still affect this one but whatever position they are in they will affect both both channels so you got your treble, you got your bass, you don't have mid which I hate the fact that you don't have mids but anyway you can work your way with that and you got effects levels and all the effects which for beginners is quite nice to have these before you buy any pedal so you get to know what the effects are this is one of the advantage of this amp and you have a very cool tap tempo here which I think is quite a nice addition because you can adjust your effects even more suiting your, your song or whatever you're playing you got an aux in that a lot of people said oh you can put your mp3 or blah blah but mp3 is something from the past now I would say try to get a, a headphone out of your computer and plug in here so you can play YouTube videos and listen to it on headphones and play along uh, without annoying your whole family, your friends, or whoever lives with you, your dog. I don't know. Anyway, uh, going. Let's go for the for the channel here first, and then I'm gonna jump to this one. Show all the type of different amps and the powerful EQ that sucks and the effects. Okay, I'm gonna go through all this stuff uh, really quick. This amplifier has been. Uh, mic with a short SM58 that I removed the capsule to you know sound a little bit more like a 57 even though it's not exactly the same they're very similar and let's have a look quickly on the speaker this is the speaker this 12 inch Fender special design speaker which is just some random Chinese speaker uh, that I have no clue uh, what it's made of what kind of magnets but anyway it is what it is. So here's the thing about uh, this amplifier that I would like to say right from the get-go before we continue is that I will be changing the speaker because it's just a random whatever speaker and I don't even know which magnet is in the back. It's a very light amplifier but let's go here for the beginning. We got the uh, your clean channel or first channel, channel one, whatever you want to call it. I've got just above two and I put the EQ just above seven, just about above, above six. So treble above seven and bass above six. Uh, I'm not gonna mess around with EQ too much because that's gonna take a long time. This is where I got the best out of this channel sounding wise. Sounds very weak and a bit whatever. Uh, if I go above two and go all the way to like three and a half it sounds loud but it's not loud good like like a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe would be or something like that it's just brutal annoying like it'll give you a headache immediately like on a first note so I like to keep it on two because it's a fairly loud amp 40 watts transistor and it's fairly loud I think the, the speaker is quite efficient uh, but anyway even though it sounds like crap That's it. So, there's not much you can do from here. You can do the effects, of course, but I, I don't want to run to all the effects yet. 
But let's see if we put a, some reverb and it will make it sound a little bit less bad. So if we put back to the neck pickup and we play some blues or something. It's okay. You can play with that, okay? But let's switch for the second channel that if you had a foot switch here, you could have this on a like a, a higher volume and then with your foot switch go into a solo type of thing. So you switch between a solo and a clean rhythm section. Uh, so same thing on the volume here, I'm just above two. On the gain I put on five, which is kind of halfway. And I thought that was the least worst setting I could find. And you got all these voices that you, you cannot turn it off. So all once you're in the second channel, you have to choose one of these. So you got your tweed, like three stages. So it's like three different colors, red, green, and orange. And you go, and they're all different in, it seems like they're trying to emulate different saturations of these models. So tweed, blackface, British, which is your Marshall, and metal, which I'm assuming might be some Mezzo Boogie thing. But it goes always to three stages, so always red, green, and orange. That doesn't mean necessarily like darker or or more distortion or anything regarding the colors. Just like seems like somewhere smaller speakers, more saturation, less saturation. It's a bit, it's not exactly uh, a grade thing, you know. But anyway, let's start from the beginning. So we got the red tweet. so we can listen to the exact sound of the what we're listening, right? I like the tweed ones are okay compared to the clean channel is way better even though it's digital. Now the greens are my favorite on these that little different breakup almost but but a little bit cleaner ish then let's go for the orange so this the orange one I think is trying to simulate a very small amplifier because it sounds like a smaller speaker for some reason let's go to the black face red These are the black face are really good too. I mean, really good compared to the, the clean channel. <laughs> yeah, the green seems to have a little bit more saturation, and then orange, small. I think it's gonna be another small one. Yeah, I'm running fast through these because I don't want to waste too much time of you or or my time, but. Seems like the red ones are a little bit bigger, the greens are medium, and the, the orange are the small ones, at least like cab wise for these. British. Yeah, smaller but with more saturation, and then even smaller, more saturation. And a little bit less volume too. Let's go for the metal ones. But I can see a kid maybe learning and trying things with this. Anyway, let's go back to the clean channel so we can go through the effects. Also, I'm gonna run really fast through the effects. I'm gonna put effects on five, so it's like you can go lower or higher in the intensity, but uh, just for us to have an idea of all the effects. I'm just trying to run fast through this amplifier, do a quick demo, but I wanna show you right after I finish with it how you can improve its sounds with some pedals there underneath here. So stick up. Uh, uh, you know, bear with me, bear with me. Uh, let's go for the first one here, which is a sort of reverb. Another reverb. Less intense, I guess. It's a very long one. This is a chorus.
very very mild chorus, not not less bland, I would say. Okay, it's not an amazing chorus, but let's see this one. Oh, this one is very slow and intense. I think actually this is the flanger already. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was the flanger already. Let's go to the other flanger. No, that's the delay, like a slapback delay. So the flanger is only one flanger, this orange one here. one setting for flanger and then you go to a slap back delay but with this uh, is also the tap tempo so the slap back delay might just be because it's really yeah because the tap tempo was really fast so it wasn't a slap back delay. It was set up with a very fast temp tempo, but okay. Let's try next delay. Is your dotted eight kind of thing? Yeah, if you want to play U two, they go for the green delay. It has reverb with it too. What is this one? It looks like a delay with some church. It's not the dotted eighth anymore. I would say this is a good one to play some Pink Floyd. Yeah, that's our Pink Floyd settings. Let's go for the next one. What we got? We got a red one here. Oh, that's the wah wah already. So you got three, three different delays, and then you go. Now I got four different delays, no, three delays, and then you go to your wah wah. Sounds really harsh, really brutal on the, on the bright end of it. This is your vibrato. So the vibrato actually sounds okay. I was surprised with it. You can do your Red Hot Chili Peppers with this, actually. too bad and your trim which is okay you can do again very slow anyway or you can do it really fast It's okay, but I prefer my Moore Trellicopter, to be honest. Um, well, I guess that's cover all, all the stuff for the panel on this amplifier. If we go back to the... We are, we are in the clean channel now, right? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on um, uh, Joyo, American sound, with lower volume, so it doesn't hit this too hard, and a little bit of saturation to give it more like a preamp compression kind of thing, and it makes it sound so much better my opinion. Just the EQ and the preamp kind of compression makes the sounds less aggressive. And then you put a little overdrive like a like a uh, kind of a blues breaker type of overdrive. smooth compression of overdrive preamp. Let's go back so you can hear the difference. Get this hard
harshness on the top end that you don't get with the smooth compression of the preamp. And it's not missing treble, it's just less, it's just a bit smoother. And you can play your, uh, if you put a now an overdrive, like a tube screamer-ish. Now let's remove everything and play the same thing. Okay, I'll remove the tube screamer. Let's just play with the preamp. Sounds better for me. Cool. Let's put a, a big muff, for example. Now I'm going to remove the joyo and uh, the blues breaker type overdrive that I have. I'm gonna leave just the tube screamer with the, with the big muff. Check this out. <laughs> Sounds horrible. And then you put back my lovely Joyo. <laughs> and that's how I did with the Pathfinder in my previous video in another channel where I speak in Portuguese only. I did the same thing, you know, just put a joyo there to hold it. But here's the funny thing, uh, this amplifier doesn't like my reverb pedal for some reason. Once again, the shielding, the ground of this amplifier, because it's such a simple thing, is not that much. And when I, I'm going to increase the volume here so you can hear it. This is the hum that comes with the amplifier when it's on 5, so halfway up. Which is bizarrely loud, to be honest, for our room, for our room uh, environment. But it's just for you to listen to the high frequency that comes when I turn on my reverb pedal. It disappeared. That's crazy. It was making like this horrible noise and now it's not doing it anymore. Okay, this is insane. Every time I have this amp for like five days now, it was always making the noise. And now that I'm doing the video with you guys, it's not making the noise. So, you know, yeah, this is just a hum of the amp and my reverb's off. Okay, good. A frequency aguda I don't possibly view please. <laughs> it's better that it's not making the noise anymore, but I, I don't know why. That's it. That's what I wanted to show. That with some pedals you can actually make this sound okay. Um, one thing that I want to do for the future, so if you stick all the way to the end and you watch the whole video, which is quite a, quite a long video for, I was trying to be very objective, but still. I'm going to change the speaker and hopefully this will sound better. This amplifier will, will get more out of the amplifier itself um, by changing the speaker. Um, I'm not going to say which speaker is going to be, but also one thing that I do a lot, even with my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, is that I use one of these, which is a... Uh, Vox MV50. No, I'm not paid. I don't have any sponsor in this channel. No sponsorship or anything. I like Vox a lot, but I'm not paid to do this. I actually like to put this MV50 here. I think they sound really good with the new tubes. And I run this into the speaker and I bypass the amplifier. So this will be a very light cabinet with a 112 inch speaker that I will, of my choice, that I'll put here. I'm not going to tell you which one if you want to know which one. I decided to put here. You have to see the next video. Yeah, sorry for the teasing, but that's what it is. Um, and of course, I want to try this amplifier with the new speaker by itself because it's quite handy. Uh, but if it still sounds really, really bad after, I can still use this. I know this will sound good. And I can just put here, and it will be a very light cabinet of a 1x12 with a really nice speaker that feels like a tube amp, even though it's not exactly the same, it's like 95%. 
and it would be nice to take it, easy to take, not as crazy as heavy as my uh, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. And yeah, good for rehearsals, playing with friends, jamming with friends, and I mean, even a gig if you mic that up. So stick around for the next video where I'm gonna do what I called the Tone Master of the Poor Man. That's what it's gonna be called. Tone, uh, poor, poor, poor Man Tone Master. That's, that's the, the idea with this. So stick around for the next video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see the next video, give us a thumbs up if you like this one, and if you can, check out my stuff on Spotify, because I have, um, I don't know which side it appears, but I have uh, an album there of my band here in, in England called M Files, I have some of my solo stuff in Portuguese as well, but if you don't speak Portuguese, go, if you like that kind of non, uh, alternative rock, garage rock, grunge-ish 90s vibe, check out uh, M Files, we play a live a lot here around London and uh, yeah that's it cheers take care see you next time bye